Are you willing to make grab of the <laughs> it's early in the morning. Are you willing to delay gratification and make short term sacrifices and for the short in the short term for rewards in the long term? If so, then we can get started. If not, this broadcast is not for you. Welcome to Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. My name is Pia McAdams. I am an author. I'm also an accounting professor and a certified life coach. I specialize in personal and small business finance and also fitness. I help people reach their goals. And I want you to know two things. One, we are doing lessons, five minute lessons, one each for the mind, the body, and the soul. And the second thing is for you to understand that I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm just here to help you unlock what's already within you. So in this mind portion, this is going to be a short five minute lesson, but it's going to take you a lifetime to master. All right. So I want you to understand that I'm not being mean when I said that. In other words, when I said that this broadcast is not for you, I'm not being mean. I want you to understand that your time is valuable and I recognize this. Okay. And I respect it. So if your coachability index is low, that is okay. Just realize that this recording is available on a replay when you're ready. But if you do understand the value that's being added, then we're going to be talking about how it is that you can delay procrastination or how you can actually stop procrastination and get yourself effectively organized to accomplish the goals that you want to. All right. So today we're going to be talking about using the ABCDE method. That's going to help you again organize your time. Remember, we're talking about procrastination. We're talking about organization and time management. The things that you've been telling me that you want to learn about. Well, this is what we're going to be talking about today. All right. So how are you guys doing this morning? I want to first thank you for taking the time to watch this, um, watch this broadcast. All right. So now that that's being said, let's go ahead and really get started here. But before we get started, I do want to ask you one thing. This is important. Did you do what I asked of you this weekend? Did you set aside some time to create your vision? You know, to make your list, to figure out what it is that you want to accomplish between now and the end of the year, and then uh, go out, project it even a little further for five years, 10 years, maybe even 20 years. If, if not, why? Seriously, why? You got to understand that if you really want to change your life, you've got to change your life. You got to do things differently. This requires doing things that you don't normally do. And honestly, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. But if you did take the time, kudos, congratulations. I know that was an exercise that you're not going to regret because now that you have your vision, now what we can do is we can take those lists that you created and then we can effectively get you started to getting on the, um, on the plan and on the journey of creating the goals that you set for yourself. All right. So what we're going to be doing again today is we're going to be talking about the ABCDE method and what this method is going to do. Guys, this is just a simple method, like seriously so simple. But what it's going to do is going to help you prioritize your tasks so that you become efficient and effective in getting the results that you want to get. All right. And again, it is so simple. The hardest thing is this. And this is only going to be hard if you don't already do it, because I'm going to ask of you one thing. OK, you ready? Think on paper. That's it. Just think on paper. That's the hardest thing about this method is requ it requires you to think on paper. But guess what? If you already are in the habit of thinking on paper, this is going to be a piece of cake for you. All right. So hopefully you have your pen and paper, but if not, I get it. It's early first thing in the morning, but go ahead and roll over, grab it. And then let's get started. I'll give you a couple seconds here. All right. So what we're going to do is you're going to take that daily list, the things that you decide that you want to do on a daily basis. And if not daily, if you don't have your daily list, cause you didn't do the exercise, then the things that you want to accomplish today. All right. Now, what you already have the list, hopefully, but if not, then the first step is to make the list, the daily list. And then what you're basically going to do is just write down on each of the tasks that you've written out an A, B, C, D, or an E. That's how simple this plan is. Okay. But let me explain to you what these letter designations mean. So for the A, these are going to be the tasks that are very, very important to you. Okay. These are things that you must do today. Okay. You must do today. These are things that are going to be like your right there, that biggest, that ugliest frog that you need to eat. Okay. These are things that have to be done and have to be done by you today. Now, if you have multiple things then you're just going to use subcategories such as like a one or a two and a three. Okay. So that's what the A means. These are the things that you must do. These are very, very important things that you must do. All right. Next is the B category and the B things are things that are important, 
and these are things that you should do, okay? So not, these are things that you must do. These are things that you should do, all right? So A, very important things you must do today. B is important in the things that you should do. All right, now C is things that would be nice if you were to be able to do it, okay? Did I tell you this was like so simple? Very, very simple. All right, now D are things that you can delegate to someone else to do. Okay, delegation is key. You ready? And then one more, E. These are things that you can actually eliminate. Like seriously, why did you even put them on your list? <laughs> All right, so let's go through those again. All right, so A. A are things that are very, very important. These are things that you must do. These are the biggest, ugliest frogs, okay? That frog that you need to eat right there. Those would be your A categories. Now, B would be things that are important and would be nice. These are things that you should do, okay? But again, it's not crucial, but these are things that you should do. Now, C are, again, these are things that would be nice if you were able, had time to do, okay? So the C things are things that are nice. It would be nice if you have time to do, but it's not that important, all right? And then D, D are going to be the things that you can delegate or get someone else to do for you. And then finally, E are going to be the things that you can eliminate. Okay, seriously, just eliminate them off your list. And again, you're deciding based upon the list that you created, what's going to be your A, your B, your C, your D, and your E. Okay, so th the great thing about this is that you have complete control from start to finish in this whole process. This is all about you. It's all about your transformation and you have complete control. Now, understand that when you're using this ABCDE method, again, it's going to help you to prioritize your list and it's going to help you produce efficient and effective results. This is step number one in time management is planning, thinking on paper. That's the hardest thing about this is making sure that you think on paper. Now, did I tell you this was going to be a simple lesson? Just five minutes to learn, but guess what? It's going to take you a lifetime to master. All right, so that is it for this. And as far as your challenge goes today, is to use the ABCD method continually. Like seriously, as you go back to your day, as you go about your day, and as you're going through different tasks, just constantly ask yourself, is this an ABCDE method? And what I'm saying, you already have your list, but sometimes we do other things outside of our list. You know, like in other words, we don't put on our list, browse social media or, you know, check email. We don't, certain things that we just don't put on our list. But at the time that you're about to do those things, Ask yourself, is it an A, B, C, D, or, or E? Um, is it an A, B, C, D, or E? And then uh, um, obviously act accordingly. All right, so that is it. Now, before I move on to the yoga portion, there is one more thing that I want to talk about because I kind of said it briefly earlier, but I don't think I've actually mentioned this live on the broadcast. I talk about this all the time in my classes, but I don't think I've actually mentioned this live on the um, broadcast. So let me see. Okay, just a couple more minutes, I promise. I mentioned earlier about your coachability index, and that is very, very important, okay? Your coachability index is a gauge that I use that's gonna help you determine whether or not you are wasting your time. And it just actually consists of you answering two questions, okay? Two questions. And with those two questions that you're, that you're answering, you're going to rate it on a scale from zero to 10. Zero being absolutely none, I'm not gonna do it. Nope, nada. 10 being absolutely I'm going to do it, okay? So the two questions are this. Number one is what is your willingness to learn, okay? Or your willingness to be coachable, that's number one. So you would just kind of rate yourself on a zero to a 10, okay? So what is your willingness to learn or your willingness to be coachable? That's number one question, all right? And the number two question is what is your willingness to change, okay? Your willingness to change. So what is your willingness to learn and what is your willingness to, to change? And you're going to rate yourself on a scale of zero to 10 on both of those. And now let me give you a quick example. Let's say that your willingness to be coachable and to learn is a 10. You're like, okay, Pia, I'm, I'm so ready. I want to learn. I want to do this stuff because I want to organize my life. I want to prioritize my life. I want to reach goals. I want to have a purpose. I want to learn this stuff. So your willingness to learn and your willingness to be coachable is a 10. Kudos. All right. But let's say on your scale of uh, scale of willingness to change, you're like, oh, no, I'm just, no, I'm not going to do that. So your willingness to change is a zero. And that's what I mean by earlier. If your willingness to learn is a 10, but your willingness to change is a zero, well, guess what? 10 times zero is a zero, which means you're not going to get anything out of this. And I don't like to waste your time, which is why I say this broadcast, this particular broadcast is not for you. Now, 
understand that let's say that your willingness to learn is a 10 and your willingness to change is a one then that means 10 times one is 10. That means you'll get 10% out of it. 10% of what I'm sharing with you, you'll get out of it. And if you're happy with that, then that's kudos. I'm happy with you as well. So when I talk about coachability index, what I'm asking you is what is your willingness to be coachable and what is your willingness to change? And without at least a one in either of those, then it's wasting your time. So that's what I mean by that. So I just kind of wanted to explain that to you. And keep in mind, now, when I talk about the coachability index, this is not something that you just do one time. This is something that changes over time. It changes within this broadcast. Like within this five minute broadcast, your coachability index could have went from a 10% to a 30% or from a 30 to a 100 or from a 100 to a, a 90. In other words, it changes. But I just want you to be aware of that. And not just for when you're listening to me, but when you're listening to anyone that's, you know, that's helping you learn something. Assess what your coachability index is. And remember, it consists of two parts, two, two very important parts. One of them is the willingness to learn, okay? And the second one, which is just as important, if not more important, is your willingness to change. Because you can be willing to learn, but if you're not willing to, willing to change, then guess what? All I've got to say is this, to know and not to do is not to know, all right? Okay, so let's move on to the yoga portion. And this is where we're going to get our body moving. Uh, remember, I said I was going to not turn off that light. All right. So how are you guys doing this morning? I hope you really did take the time this weekend to set aside and do your vision because you're going to see that it's going to make a very big difference in, in your life because now you have a projection of where you're going to be moving forward. So it's not like just going around on a day-to-day -day basis, like, you know, like with, just in like a trance, really, because that's what we tend to be if we don't have a vision is you tend to be in a trance you just do the same thing over and over again you get up you go to work you know you come home you eat you go to bed you know you may you know do something a little bit in between but for the most part you're in a trance because you're in that cycle and it's about getting outside of that cycle if you want to if you want to make changes okay so having a vision is very very important to doing that and then the planning that we just talked about is that first step but remember it requires you to plan on paper and I want you to Say, oh, I remember this. And I understand. I, I'm gonna. I have this memorized in my mind. It doesn't work that way. Okay, this is scientific, guys. You know me, right? I'm not just telling you something. I'm not just spewing at the mouth. Even though sometimes I do kind of ramble. But even in my rambling, there's some really good stuff there. Okay, I'm pretty sure there is. There's really good stuff there. All right, so we're gonna move on to the yoga portion. And for this one, let's go ahead and start off in tabletop. This is on your hands and knees. So make sure that your palms are directly beneath your shoulders and your knees are directly underneath your hips. And just kind of stay there for a moment. And as you know, I like to say, this is the time where you connect your mind-body, which is already connected, but you want to get in alignment with it yourself. You want to become grounded. So use your breath, nice deep ujjayi breath, inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your mouth. And remember, as you inhale, your abdominal is going to expand, expand, your chest is going to rise as the diaphragm moves up toward the chest cavity. And as you exhale, your chest is going to collapse and your abdominal is going to go in. Use that ujjayi breath throughout the practice of yoga. And then immediately after yoga, we're going to be doing a three-minute guided meditation. I'm going to give you um, a meditation to help you guide to stay focused on, your, um, on yourself, okay, on your breathing. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Tabletop, guys. It's a practice. Please join me. Toes are spread out nice and wide. Again, palms are directly underneath your shoulders, knees are directly underneath your hips. Take a few breaths to get yourself aligned. And if you are aligned, go ahead and take a few breaths and just kind of set your intentions on what it is that you want to accomplish on this next five minutes of practice of yoga. Just kind of move your hips side to side, just get your body warm. Remember, this is the time that we'd like to use to go internal to see what's going on with you at this present moment. Any tension, stress, strains, pains that's going on internally, go ahead and get in the line and tune with those inside your body. And let's go ahead and release those using our breath and using our movement with these yoga postures. All right, let's come to neutral spine. I want you to draw your breath in through your nose. 
And then as you exhale, I want you to drop your chin down toward the chest, round to the spine, tuck the pelvic under, press those armpits down away from your ears and toward the back. And as you inhale, your head and chest comes forward. And as you exhale, round through the spine. Again, nice deep breath, inhaling. This time as you exhale, I want you to curl those toes under and let's take it to downward facing dog. And go ahead and start to pedal your legs. Now as you inhale, just go ahead and release both knees down toward the back. And as you exhale, extend those legs. Press your chest toward your thighs and your knees. Let's do that again. As we inhale, draw those knees down toward the mat. And as you exhale, spin those legs. Lift the kneecaps to engage the hamstrings and the quadriceps. Press the chest toward the thighs and the knees. Let's do that one more time. As you inhale, draw those knees down toward the mat. And as you exhale, extend those legs. Try to get this heel down, but again, don't worry if you can't. Continue to breathe. Nice, you die breath. Now as you inhale, it's going to bring that right knee into your chest. And as you exhale, extend that right leg all the way back. Again, as you inhale, knee toward the chest. And as you exhale, extend the leg all the way back. Try to get it just a little higher. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. This time, I want you to bend that right knee. Open up the hip. You're pressing your chest toward that left thigh and knee. And you're breathing. Now go ahead and extend that leg, and let's go ahead and bring the foot all the way toward the fingertip, and let's take it up to the high lunge. Relax those shoulders. As you inhale, straighten out the leg, and as you exhale, bend that right knee, relax, draw the hip down toward the mat. Again, as you inhale, straighten out the leg, and as you exhale, bend the knee, relax the shoulder. One more time, inhale, straighten out the legs. This time as you exhale, bend the knee. Let's take it to the lunge, the high lunge. Open up your chest, lift your head up. And let's go ahead and take that back left leg, draw it in as you straighten out the leg. Hinge forward into pyramid. Bring those fingertips down toward the mat. Lift the kneecap to engage the quadriceps to give a deeper stretch on the hamstring and continue to breathe. You need to move your way through it. Just kind of inhale and exhale. If you need to, just move your way through it. All right, go ahead and bend the knee, flatten out the palms. Take that right foot back. Take it down to the plank. Release your knee, chest, chin, or chaturanga and dandasana. And as we inhale, take it to upward facing dog. Curl those toes under. Exhale, the downward facing dog and start to pedal the legs. Remember, you can modify this and take it to a wide stance, downward facing dog, but continue to pedal. Remember, just doing what feels comfortable to you. Now, as you inhale, squeeze and bring that left knee in towards the chest, and as you exhale, extend that left leg all the way back. Again, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Go ahead and bend that knee. Pressing the chest toward the right knee and thigh, lifting that knee, cap to engage the quadricep. Knee for stretching the hamstring. Straighten out that leg. Bring that foot forward toward the fingertips. And take it up to the high lunge. Inhaling, and exhaling. Relax the shoulders, open up the fingertips, looking up toward the sky. Remember, breathe your way through it. This time, release that right foot and hinge forward. Relax your shoulders and use your breath.
Remember, as you inhale, just kind of hold your position. It's when you exhale, it's when you release and you surrender into the pose. All right, go ahead and flatten out the palms. Take this leg back. Knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upper facing dog. Throw the toes under. Exhale, the downward facing dog. And start to pedal. Remember, downward facing dog or Adho Mukhasavasana is a resting pose, so this is a resting position. If you need to, go ahead and release your knees down and take it to child's pose, or you can even take it to tabletop. All right. Inhale and exhale. This time, bring that right knee, put it in just directly below your belly button, place the kneecap down toward the mat, and extend that opposite leg all the way back. And let's go to pigeon pose. Now remember your breathing, this is a great pose. Let me get a little bit of the camera. Great pose to open up the hip flexor here. You just press your hip bones down, your hips down toward the mat. Let the crown of your head hang forward. And again, if it's too much, you can be up here, just depending on your flexibility, okay? Feel free to be up here. Now we're gonna take that right arm, we're gonna open it up, open up the chest, relax the shoulder and breathe. And then release it down. Go ahead and curl that left toe under. Bring yourself up. Plank position. Again, knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to upward facing dog. Curl those toes under. Exhale to downward facing dog. And start the pedal. All right, knee comes in. And extend that leg. And then bring that knee in. Place it just below your belly button. Curl the leg over toward the right. So that left knee goes down. Extend that right leg. And then come up a little. All the way back. Uncurl the toe. And then take it down toward the forearm. Relax and breathe. Remember, just use your breath to direct it toward the tight areas, namely, namely your hips, the hip flexor, and just release, relax, surrender into the pose. All right, come up in the forearm, take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, extend the opposite arm, that left arm goes all the way up. Your place follows your thumb. Obviously, if there's too much strain and stress on your neck, feel free to look forward or to look down. Just really press the hip down into the mat. Surrender and release the tension and tightness in your body. All right, go ahead and release it down. Curl that toe under, come up into your palms. Take it back to the plank. Again, knee, chest, chin, and Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to upper facing dog. Curl those toes under. Exhale to downward facing dog. And then slowly walk your feet in toward your palms. Keep your palms flat, bend the knees if you need to. Four fold here in Uttanasana and then slowly round it up. Take it one vertebrae at a time. Making sure that your head is the last to rise. Draw your shoulders up, down, and back. Just come to Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhale, take the arms up. And as you exhale, dive the body forward. Placing your palms flat, walk your feet out, left, right, or right, left, to the edges of the mat, and then slowly release the hips down. Using those elbows to push on those inner thighs, bring those palms together. At heart center, bow your head down into Malasana, and go ahead and give yourself some attitude. And then release the palms down. Gently take them behind. Transition yourself into a comfortable seated position facing forward. Make sure that you're on your sit bones and off the fleshy part of your bottom. Now draw your inhale, arms go up. And as we exhale, release the fingertips down toward the mat. Again, nice deep breath. Inhaling. And exhaling. One more time, nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose, 
This time we're going to greet the palms together at the very top. Exhale as we bring the palms down to heart center. And namaste. Alright, that concludes our practice of yoga. Thank you for joining me. This is going to bring, the, bring us to the meditation. So we're going to do a three minute guided meditation. And to get started, I want you to go ahead and take a nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose. Sorry, Siri came on. Again, nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose. And exhaling through your mouth. Now this time, take a nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose. And as you exhale through your mouth, I want you to just close your eyes. breathing but just breathe regularly I don't want you to manipulate your breathing I want you to just be aware and focus on your breath again don't manipulate it just breathing naturally normally like you normally would inhaling through your nose exhaling through your nose I want you to notice that as you focus on your breath it naturally slows down Your mind starts to wonder. I want you to acknowledge the thought, but then gently bring it back to your breath. I want you to be aware of this present moment, the state that you're in right now. We're going to do something a little different. I want you to repeat your name, but I want you to say it after the words I am. So, for example, I would say, I am Pam so you say, I am, and you repeat your name, and do this mentally. Now I want to invite you to think of all the stresses and things that you have to do. Invite those into your thoughts right now. Invite those into your reality. All the stresses that you may have, the things that you have to do, things that are worrying you. Now I want you to say, you know, drop your last name and just say your first name. So I would say, I am Pia. So you repeat after you, after me, but just say your name. I am, and then repeat your name. Again, do it mentally. Now this time I want to invite the thoughts in your mind for when you were a child, somewhere before the age of 12, the things that you had as a happy child the memories, the friends, the playtime, the good things and the bad, just invite it all in. Now I want you to drop your first name and just say I am. Just repeat that with no labels attached, just I am. And I want you to get rid of all thoughts. you to arrest in awareness. And I want you to rest in existence. Just be. And I invite you to take a nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Again, nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose, and exhaling through your mouth. One more time, deep breath, inhaling through your nose, and exhaling through your mouth. All right, go ahead and open up your eyes as you release, relax, return, refreshed, and calm.
you've done something good for yourself today. Thank you for taking the time to meditate with me. And again, thank you for taking the time to watch this live broadcast, Transform Yourself in 15 Minutes. Your word for today is imaginative. I want you to have a very imaginative day. <laughs> it's hard for me to say that word. And I will see you again same time tomorrow. Bye.